Okay, I've been meaning to film this for uh, days now, but I've had a bit of a tumultuous New Year, so. <laughs> Welcome to everything I made in 2022. And I have notes. So, I guess we will start off in January. In January, I made an 1890s walking skirt. I was making this skirt as I moved. In February, I made a yellow 1940s dress. This one. It's a house dress. And I loved it. I think the pattern was fantastic. I just made it a hair too small for me, so I ended up gifting it to a friend. I have plans in the new year to make it again, just in green. After that, I made a beige princess seam vest. It was a wearable mock-up in preparation for a yellow princess seam dress for a Victorian project that I have since abandoned. So I'm afraid we won't be getting that project. <laughs> in March, I discovered the closet historian and fell in love with all of the things that she has made. So I also made a Luke Skywalker dress based on the instructions and the pattern guidance that she provides in her video. In April, April was a big month for me, I finally, finally finished the 1870s tea gown that I was working on for the longest time. It is a um, mostly brown tea gown made of a brown basket weave wool with a silk and rayon blend under layer and it was trimmed with um, some kind of rug binding and dark brown. I really like the effect that this garment gives, I just don't think it's the most flattering of garments. In May, I made a Kenobi-inspired dress and bolero because I was very excited about the new series coming out and it is still one of my favorite dresses. The only problem I have with it is that there's something truly wrong with the arm size and I can't really lift my arms that high. So I might remake this dress out of a jersey knit in brown so I have some range of motion. I also made a belt to go along with this dress out of leather with plans to make another one in black. In June, I once again fell down the closet historian rabbit hole and made a color blocked, or I guess fabric blocked, um, skirt, pencil skirt with the, I think I have some here actually, with this oil slick latex and a tropical wool. Um, following that I made a 1950s brown suit dress ensemble, so it is a bolero jacket with a chic dress underneath it made of a herringbone weave cotton. Sadly I made it just a hair too small, a mite too small, so there is some pulling at the seam allowances which because of the way the fabric is woven is very obvious. Um, my simple fix for this was to go in with some markers and try and camouflage that. The dress is in fact too small. I should probably remake it. In July I made a bust improver and a hip pad for a uh, Edwardian project that will hopefully eventually happen. And then a, I also made the Queen's Gamut Pinafore and Blouse. The pattern is free on Mood's website. I will link it down below. This is one of my favorite dresses. It's very comfortable to wear and very cute. Um, the blouse has some opportunities. I might remake that. <laughs> then I also made a, another pinafore off of my favorite new look pattern. In this one in blue. It very much reminds me of Belle. It's the exact same shade of blue and it's a very similar style of dress. So it is like my little blue Belle dress. And then I also made some more hobbity stays rather than um, proper stays. So it is the American Duchess stays pattern. I just cut off the tabs. And then in August, August was a very boring month as far as making things goes. Um, I just made a chemise and a petticoat, both lace insertion, both um, pulled from the Angela Clayton McCall's pattern for the Edwardian corset because I needed a petticoat and I was just very, very annoyed with everything that I was making whenever I tried to make a petticoat, so I just made that slip into a petticoat. And I also made one out of four Peaky Blinders hats that I've made, the first one, which is this one. And in September, I made a Han Solo shirt, Rogue One, I guess, inspired shirt, um, also pulled from Mood's website. It is sized for a man, so you'll have to do some significant pattern grading but I found it was a very cute shirt. It goes very, very well with the black pencil skirt. And an Edwardian skirt, another one. Although I don't recall which one that was. What Edwardian skirt did I make? I don't remember. If I remember, I'll put a link here. Or maybe not a link, but a picture. Hmm. 
In October of a very productive month, I made two Clone Trooper sweaters, Clone Trooper inspired sweaters. One for Commander Cody, which is my favorite, coincidentally, and one for Echo. I plan on making more as long as I, as soon as I get my hands on some more fabric for it. Um, I also made two more Peaky Blinders hats. These were gifts. And then I finally finished the Alexander McQueen dress I have been trying to recreate for forever. And I love it. And I have plans to make another one. Um, and then I also made a 1970s dress, which I was originally going to film and put a video up of, but I don't think the dress is particularly flattering, especially with the haircut I have right now. It reads very much a uh, peasant Snow White, and I'm not a fan. So, <laughs> we scrapped that video. And then in November, I made one last P Blinders hat. This is a gift for a colleague, because he had the jacket and he needed the hat. And then I also made a child's version of the walk away dress as a gift for a colleague as well. And then in December, I made a plaid pinafore dress, uh, the one that falls just below the knee. This is all self-drafted and I think it shows. And then I also made a yellow 1960s dress that I am very excited about. I think it's so cute and I also made the ivory overcoat to go along with it. So. I think that's a lot for 2022. I think I got a lot done, a lot, not what I expected to get done, but a lot nonetheless. So in total, that was 27 projects for the year 2022, and I hope 2023 will be just as productive. And for everybody that has joined me in 2022, thank you for subscribing along and following all the, all the little projects that I do, and I really appreciate your support. It does mean a lot to me and I appreciate the feedback that I get on it. Um, the good feedback and the constructive feedback as it is extremely helpful for me to make the quality of my content better. Um, 2023 I'm going to work on improving the quality of the videos as well as taking on um, I think more sophisticated projects than I have been doing. I really like following vintage patterns so hopefully there'll be more videos like that up too and I've been itching to do something historical again as well so um, I might have a big well, I say big, but it's big for me. A uh, historical project planned for this year as well. Hopefully this year I will actually get it done in time for Christmas because I need it for Christmas. So thank you um, for watching. And if you would like to see more from me, please hit subscribe. Um, I don't really have an upload schedule. I just try to upload once a month. So yeah.